John, thanks again for talking to us about preaching. That's what the MacArthur Center for Expository Preaching is, is all about. We want to promote good practices in expository preaching. Uh, we, the reason we come to you as preachers is, is you've been doing this a long time and you have a lot of help for us. And I think you have sympathy. You understand what <laughs> preachers go through. Yeah. So what's your favorite part of preaching? What excites you the most about the act of preaching? Well, let me start on the other side of that question. My least favorite part of preaching is right after the sermon. I always feel like it, the Word of God deserved more than I gave to it. More insight, more clarity, more passion, better illustrations. So uh, I don't like the part after preaching, but I would say the best part of preaching is right before preaching because that's when my mind is most uh, filled with what I'm gonna do and when there's the most hope and the most anticipation and the most excitement and the most enthusiasm about it. So it's kind of an odd reality that um, I come ready, my heart is on fire, I, I have fire in my bones as Jeremiah said because the word of God is there and I wanna get it out and I uh, have to deal with the most frequent reality that when I'm done, I feel like I fell short. I don't know that it has to do with an audience response or lack of it. I just think going into it, this massive privilege and hours and hours and hours of absorbing all of this truth and then depending on the Holy Spirit to, to release it all in a way that honors the Lord is such a great privilege that I approach it um, the way you would the most significant event in your life. But when it's over, there's always this sense that, Lord, you're gonna to have to make something out of nothing feeling. And maybe that's how it, it will always be. The, the words are not gonna make the difference. The work of the, the Holy Spirit through what was said does. The, the most difficult part is outside of your ability because the Holy Spirit right. has to do that effectual work right. through yeah. his word. Yeah, and I also think that's why I would never ever want to be, and, and I did it for a few years, traveling around giving one message here and there, here and there, here and there. Because I think the effect of your ministry is cumulative. You, you may have five Sundays in a row where, or, or more and say, oh, I should have done better. But in spite of that feeling, you have built in an expositional fashion an understanding of a book that is moving in the direction that God ordained the book to be written. So you're, you're taking people through the word of God. In a sense, expository preaching covers up for a weak sermon here and there. Because in the big scheme of thing, things, you're coming back next week and you're going to the next level. You can always pick up something that you left off last time that could maybe enrich that one. So I, I think you, you can't live and die even though you do to a certain degree with every sermon. It's the cumulative effect of basically embedding all this divine truth in the hearts and minds of people. They don't remember so much. I, I, I say I could have said this better or whatever. They don't remember what you said. They, they go away with usually a sort of inescapable impression of some truth, one, two, maybe three realities that you've endeavored to pound into their minds in a way that they can't escape from. And I think cumulatively, that, that is the real work of preaching. And it's not about the sermonic form or the delivery and the dynamism. What you're saying is, is that the heart of expository preaching is that you're giving these people the word of God and it doesn't fail. I think intensity is important. Mm -hmm. You use the word dynamism. I think intensity is important because it expresses conviction. It expresses belief. Look, you, you need to know this. This is from God. I think intent, not, not being loud, but just being intense is, is very, very important. But I think beyond that, it's accuracy. You wanna be accurate with the word of God. And the best you can do is from the bottom of your heart with all your intensity, uh, unfold the scripture. Now, in my mind, it, it doesn't matter what the outline is. You don't want the outline to be the most dramatic part of your message. You don't, you, working on clever outlines is really a waste of time from my standpoint because you don't want them to remember the outline. That, that's not the idea. You want them to remember 
the truth that they are not going to be able to escape. It's like Paul said to Titus when he said, preach with all authority and don't let anybody evade that. He uses the term kataferneo, think around you. Don't let anybody reason out of what you're saying. Close them in. Capture them for this truth so that it's not possible to avoid it. So how you get that truth clear to them does involve some outlining, at least in your mind. You've got to have steps, right? It's a logical process. But you haven't preached necessarily a great sermon because you had a great outline. Your greatest sermons are not outlines. They're the inescapable impact of the truth that you are unfolding for them. Charles Spurgeon said that if any man thinks he can preach as, as well as he should, then he should give up altogether. Can a person improve their preaching? Yes, you improve it. Um, practice, practice, practice. You, you do get better at it if you do the work. You're not going to get better at it if you don't do the work. Uh, it, you, you can say, well, if I just keep talking enough, I'm going to be a better preacher. No, it's not that you get used to talking. It's that you get better. And here's the key, because you're studying all the time and you're filling up that well that you can draw from. Uh, look, when, when I'm preaching and you the same, I will say things in a sermon that I never, ever put together before. I didn't think of it in my preparation. I don't know if I ever thought of it in my life. But the factors, the components for that conclusion were all down in the well. And in the moment of that intensity, that all assembled itself in my mind and came out. So getting better at preaching is not just being a better public speaker. It's having a deeper resource of biblical truth and sound doctrine that you can draw from in your preaching that's beyond your preparation. It's just the well that sits there all the time that you can pull out to add to what you specifically prepared. So you'll preach better when you know more the Word of God, when you know it more deeply and broadly. That's what will make you a better preacher. That's so helpful. That's why Lloyd-Jones called it logic on fire. Right. Yeah, good. Thank and you. And it is logic. Yeah. It has to be reasonable.